used to like look at cycle times in minutes. Now we're now working better and we look at it in seconds now. So my, my partner, she's getting fed up with me watching it on the camera. You know, 10 o'clock, the machine needs me. We need to go and check on it. People would say to me, you're three times too expensive. It's been really rewarding because I've come in, the machine stuff, I've sussed it. But as we're now improving how we do it, how we set it up, that's happening less and less. Harry, you've just recently bought two Nakamuras, an AS200 and a WT150. We're stood in front of the AS200 right now, single spindle, single turret, and you're making these square parts. Can you talk to me about the application? Yeah, so on these, we used to do these milling, so we used to get stock bar in, square, they're actually rectangular, so we had to mill two faces. So we'd mill, we'd drill, we'd knock it down, have to keep it flat and mill again the other face, trying to keep it parallel because our next stop goes into another soft jaw that we, then we put it then down. So it had to be parallel for our uses to uh, be able to fit in the soft jaw and then we'd drill and tap. So, you know, you're talking three operations and fiddly, annoying, and then you're debaring it and you're taking your, you know, your tips of your fingers off. It's one I used to do and it was just fiddly and horrible. So now on the AS200, we're bar feeding it through. We've got a square collet made so we can push the, the square material through and we're doing it off in one go. So we're doing all the operations we were doing in one process, part and off, and all we're doing is deep hipping it at the end. So it's coming off in one operation, not three. So what are the operations that you're doing on there? So I can see you're milling obviously the faces, you're drilling, threading, yeah. all with live tooling. All live tooling, so live tooling's doing the, uh, doing the flats putting in the cross hole and obviously the conventional is uh, you know, in the truck is doing the drilling and the tapping and it's rigid tapping which is again something we struggled with on our old machines you know whereas this it's just doing it and I think that's M4 I think it's quite so it's quite a small that is, 316 stainless steel yeah. it's a rigid tap and it's not doing it slow so and it's doing it consistently so we do these in hundreds off so you know, we'll have a, we'll leave it to it and have a bucket full of parts. So small parts, but tough materials as well. Yeah. yeah. So going from the milling machine operation, having two or three ops on the milling machine and then carrying it on, how much has the company flown by buying these machines in terms of cycle times? Well, obviously your cycle time you're removing, and even if we said the machine was all the same, you're removing the loading. You're removing you know, so many aspects of even putting it down, moving it around the shop floor, tracking it. So, you know, in that in itself loses so much time. But then obviously the, the speed of the tool change, everything on these machines, they're just so much increased our cycle, you know, the decrease the cycle time so much. It's really helped it helped us keep up with and you know, keep up with the customers, you know, keep up with their demands. As now with like, you know, it's harder to find right the good people. Obviously we need to with the people, the good people we do have you know, keep up with our demands so and basically be fast enough to do it. So this has really helped us and helped us be competitive as well in many ways. You got two good guys on both the machines and what yeah. you've got as well is you've got a bar feeder going yeah. along through to a parts catcher to then secure the parts. So even in terms of going from the milling machine to people putting it on the machine, not not necessarily the cycle times as well, the setup yeah. times. How easy is it to program a work shift and program the, the program on the machine? Yeah, but I won't pretend like I'm a whiz on these. <laughs> so it's not me who does it. So I won't stand there and say it's easy, but our guys, you know, say it's, it's brilliant. You know, they are, you know, they're loving it really. They're, it's, you know, there's lots of aspects of these with the advanced program, especially the WT150 that really helps in that aspect. So we find compared to our old live tool machines, they're up and going vastly quicker. And as you say, you're not doing free setups. So instantly they're quicker anyway. So your downtime is less. Plastic yeah. part here, different material on a different machine. So the WT's got twin spindle, twin turret, right? So you've yeah. got your left and your right. How are you cutting this and what's the application? So yeah, so we're starting it like we would conventionally on, a, on a, if we did it without a normal part of the live tool and lay. So we turn the dome and we put in the, turn the OD. Obviously then we bring the live tool and then do all the cross drilling, but then we obviously pass it over onto the sub spindle and do the cross milling. So it's not the world's fanciest part in any way, we've done fancier parts, but in, in any sense, it's still doing the part off in one. So even though it's not complex, it's not high tolerance. It works. It's still, it works, it, it still works. does it. And it works for you. Talking about plastic and different materials, this creates really stringy swarf. Yeah. Is there anything that you've had to implement into your program to kind of cut the swarf, evacuate it properly, anything like that? So the machine has an application specifically for breaking up the swarf. 
it judders as it goes along and makes up makes the, the swarf smaller so easier to cope with easier to get through the machine so again really really handy for keeping it going we were talking earlier about these are your latest purchases for diamond precision engineering and you really big them up you're really confident with them Talk to me about how confident you are in setting the machine up. Say if you've got about 400 or 4,000 parts to run, how confident in you are to say, yep, set it up, ready, the bars are stacked, the tools tools are good, go. Honestly, it's a, it's like a, a, a game almost. You know, it's, a, it's one of those things, you know, you do everything you possibly can and you just, you hope. So we're still learning it. You know, it's a lot of one, what I've got, my sense of it is it's a, lot more to it than you realize there's all little variables so we're just basically doing it by trial and doing it and finding what pro problems we get so we'll leave the machines going at six o'clock i watch them on the camera and like my my partner she's getting fed up with me watching it on the camera <laughs> and like and i say to her you know 10 o'clock the machine needs me we need to go and check yeah. on it so she's very good she comes down with me uh you know it's the first couple of times it's so you know you get here and there's a red light on and you're like you know oh what's happened but you know, we, you know, and that's where my bit comes in. I've got to get it going again. So I've, we've, you know, it's that moment when you can get it going again. For me, it's been really rewarding because I've come in, the machine stopped, I've sussed it. But as we're now improving how we do it, how we set it up, that's happening less and less. So the moment when you come in to check on the machine late at night and the green light's on, and all you've got to do is check the size and everything is good and go home again. That's super satisfying, so it's brilliant. It's very rewarding for you uh, owning it, these machines. Have these machines opened you up to more work or um, work that you've gone, yeah, actually, we can do that now we've got these machines? Yeah, definitely. There was always things we'd look and people would say to me, you're three times too expensive. And I think, how, how are you doing that? So, but now, you know, from having these machines, you know, ETG, they did time studies for me on parts that I was trying to quote. And to honestly, they came back and I thought, nah, that can't be done. That's just they're joking there but really it has i'd say the biggest you know way to point it out we used to like look at cycle times in minutes now we're now working better and we look at it in seconds now so we don't say how many minutes we say how many seconds they're just that's changed it so much for us mm -hmm.